the place of God. Let me not just say regarding recovery, but the place of God in your life. Our 21st century Christianity is trying to give us alternatives on how to do it without God. And uh, almost everything is uh, beginning to exclude God. If you look at our programs, you look at the things we teach, I, I don't want to exclude myself and blame others, but I want us to look at it as a church. And as a church, I don't just mean this gathering here. As a church, I mean the body of Christ in this dispensation and this time. There is a tendency, there is a falling away. That's what I can call it. There is a falling away. Whereby someone is trying to tell us we can serve God without God. I don't know if you got what I said. Someone is trying to tell us we can successfully do church without God. It looks to me like using God without being in need of God to achieve what only God can do. Write that down. It looks like trying to use, not just God, trying to use something about God to achieve what only God can produce. As I look at our generation, it seems to me like what God can do is more fashionable than God. And therefore, we are falling in love with what God can do minus God. And teachings are coming up and encouragements are coming up uh, that you really don't need God to have what God can do. So God is irreplaceable in any area of your life. You can't do it without God. Someone may teach you as a pastor how to grow a big ministry without God. But sooner or later, you will realize you need God. We have given young people shortcuts on how to use God to get a husband without God. But sooner or later, you will realize that you need God. Tell your neighbor you need God. You better begin with God because you need God. <laughs> we are trying to serve God without God. But sooner or later, you will realize that if you will stand in this kingdom, you need, there is no formula. You need God. We are beginning to esteem any church growth conference that will teach you everything on how to grow a big ministry and leave holiness and prayer out of it. You, you attended a deception camp. When all is said and done, you need God. <laughs> we may preach 21 ways to recover the money you lost. But even the money that Peter recovered, got from the mouth of fish, is because God said it is in the mouth of fish. Moses struck the rock and water came out. But God told Moses, I will stand by the rock. So it is not the rock. It is who was standing by the rock. There's no alternative. Tell your neighbor you need God. And I came to give you nothing but God, ladies and gentlemen. 
I came to show you nothing anytime I stand here to teach. Just know that at the end of the day, it is God in it. When I talk to you about honoring your parents, it has nothing to do with the man, it is God in it. When I talk to you about touch not the anointed of God, it has nothing to do with the anointed, it has something to do with the God of the anointed man. Tell your neighbor, you need God. Run away from any formula that has no God. It will destroy you. I told you I spoke to a young minister as young as I and he was doing something very deceptive. And I picked it. And I told him, my brother, why are you doing this? Because I could tell deception. I could tell you sending young people wherever he's going to do a meeting and these young people would gather information about people and give him an iPad or notebooks. They'll position themselves and so he's speaking like he's under a prophetic unction. But these guys are doing things. So I cornered him. I said, why do you do this? He said, ah, you know my brother, you will tell you the truth. I said, why? He said, I have a building project and people don't give money except you do this. But you know me, I'll not do it the rest of my life. I just want to do it to finish the building project. Once I'm done, I'll come back to preaching the truth. You know me. And I asked him, which God is this that cannot provide money for his house? You still to build for him. Then when you are done building for him, he's able to live in it. My brother, leave it. You don't need what you have to steal to claim God did it. Don't snatch anybody's husband and then give a testimony. Otek, <laughs> Martin. Otek, small. <laughs> but this will help you. Uh, let me tell you, that if you come here, the only thing I'll give you is God. If God cannot help you, I cannot help you. Men of God, stop trying to fix people that God cannot fix. It will leave you desperate. Don't build another heaven. There's just one heaven. Whatever is written, don't add to it. Don't remove from it. The fastest way to grow is to be at peace with God. Anything God cannot give you, leave it. Any man God cannot sustain under you, you have to do funny things to sustain him, will be pain in your neck. Any member you have to call 21 times. If you didn't visit him seven times a day, he'll not come to church on Sunday. Pastor, run for your life. <laughs> Somebody say, God! <laughs> Any woman you are dating that prayer cannot sustain. You are dating an altar. Run for your life. Any ministry you are pastoring that every week you have to figure out how to lie. Because when you lie, they are happy. And when you preach the truth, they don't come to church. Leave it. I have served this God for some years. I can tell you he does miracles. I can tell you God can give you money without you lying. I can tell you that. I can tell you the biggest money you'll ever carry is not because you have preached. It's when God chooses to reward you. May no man replace God with a miracle. <laughs> may no man help you out of God in the name of helping you listen if you have to lose a big house because you have chosen to be loyal to God let it go if you have to lose ministry because of God let it go you don't understand what I'm saying You know, I always wonder if I took someone, let me not go into that story. Let me not go into that story. There are things you take now that is the reason you will not live long enough to enjoy your life. And I can tell you the truth that you can have a big ministry without God. What about 
those people that Jesus said, and you will say to me, Lord, Lord, in your name we prophesied. In your name, cripples walked. In your name. And then I will say to them that a cripple can walk, but I don't know you. That the lame jumping up and walking is not a sign of the presence of God. Ladies and gentlemen, have God thick on your life. Not just greed for a miracle. Because the presence of God is the presence of everything. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. I know I'm talking about recovery, but brother, listen, listen, listen. Anything you want to get without God will destroy you. If you are in this kingdom. Please don't try to make God look more powerful. He's powerful. <laughs> you don't know the danger in people shouting and crying and falling down over a wheelchair. You know how it came to the meeting. And you know what is happening. And you are saying in the name of Jesus. And innocent people are falling down. Are crying. They have... And let me tell you, God can come through that deception for the sake of the hunger of the people and the desperation he has for his people. And he can help his people minus you who planned it. I never knew them. The greatest asset in this life is the hand of God. Don't forget the story. They came to Elisha. Are you the one that was praying in the night? Who was praying there in the night? Someone was praying here from 10. Who, are you here? Someone was praying here from 10. I don't know who helped me. Oh, you are the one, eh? You are praying here from 10 in the night. All through the night. Even if you never get sleepers, stay with it. That is what has made me what I am today. You may be called names. You may be called wasting time. But if you stay with that thing for three years. If you choose God, it's a matter of time. You may go hungry when you have chosen God. You may go naked when you have chosen God. Your house may be locked because you have chosen God. A man may walk out of your life because you have chosen God. A ministry may reject you. Pastors may reject you because you have chosen God. But give it time. I visited people who walked through the back door because I looked like I had nothing to offer. But I stayed with God. And I'm still staying with God. I've not seen my house for two days because I'm staying with God. I'm going to see them after this. Because there is something about God. I have learned that your eloquence minus God is a dangerous equation. The hand of God is the greatest asset any man can have. No matter what you are looking for, if you have not looked at God long enough, it is not worth having. If, a, if your cry for a husband is taking away your passion for God, you are walking a dangerous road. If, you are, if your hunger for a job has now taken away your desire to pray, you are walking a dangerous path. If the desire to have money, riches, wealth is killing your walk with God, you are walking a dangerous path. So, they come to the prophet Elisha. I came there yesterday and Elisha says, bring me a musician. Because Elisha knew that even if three presidents come to see me, if I can't give them God, I'll just be as good as another witch doctor that has been consulted. Anybody you never give God, you didn't help. Anyone you didn't point to God, you didn't succeed. Your mission as a man of God is complete when you have made men fall in love with God. The greatest testimony about your life is that when I met that man, my prayer life changed. When I met that man, my holiness life came together. When I met that man, I left the woman I was sleeping with. When I met that man, I stopped defrauding my company. That's the greatest testimony you can give men. Because I have no heaven I have built. 
I pray one prayer that even if I ever miss it, may no one miss it because of me. It is dangerous when you divert the attention of men from God. It is dangerous when you are gathering men around you with another agenda. Jesus said, if I be lifted I, I will draw men. Preachers, the secret is not in 17 ways to grow a church. The secret is in how deep you reveal God to them. The secret is in how powerfully you show them God. The secret is how they can read your heartbeat for God. When you become the signboard of men towards God, there's a reward you cannot carry. When you seek to cause men fall in love with God, heaven will give you bodyguards you cannot pay. When you become a representative of heaven on earth, the security of heaven will back you up. Give me this, put it there. Paul said, I am hard pressed between two opinions. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which will be far much better. And I don't know what to choose. Because Paul walked with God to that dimension where Paul, Paul got to that level where all of us should get to. Where death was not an accident, death was a choice. When you walk with God long enough, you talk like Jesus say, talked. Pilate is asking, was it Pilate asking him, are you the Christ? He's arrested. And he said, it is just like you have said. And Pilate told him, do you know I have the power to release you? When, when, was it Pilate or whatever? When Pilate got to that, he told him, let me tell you something. When you talk about matters of power, you have no power at all over me. You don't know what you're saying. What I received from the Father is what I lay down. I received my life from the Father and I have the power to lay it down. I'm going to die willingly. No man can kill me. That's why on the cross, he had to dismiss his spirit. Father, into your hands, I, they are not taking it. I am willing. I commit my spirit. No man can kill me. No man take away my life from me. It's a place of confidence. You don't die like chicken. You don't urinate on yourself because a gun is pointed at you. It is a place where you know you go when you are willing to go. Look at this. Paul said, but I am hard. Can you turn your neck? That is Philippians 1.20. 120. Okay, let's read one, two, three, go. For I am hard pressed between the two. Having a desire to depart. Now listen, Paul walked with God and came to a place where he desired to die and be with the Lord. We are still praying, I shall not die, I shall not die, I shall leave. Paul desired to die. Because death is a threat to people who do not know God. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ. He said, which is far much better. Look at verse number 24. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. So Paul is negotiating with death. Do I die or not? I can die, but let me remain. He said, nevertheless, please verse number 24. Oh, nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful. I am needed. And I want to show you why he's needed. Is more needful for you. Verse number 25. And being confident. Somebody say being confident. I didn't hear you. Somebody say being confident. I desire to die. Sometimes I feel like dying. Because the region beyond is beautiful. But being confident. I'm not guessing. That's why they stoned him and buried him with stones. And he pushed the stones and walked away. Because no man could take his life. That's why he was in the sea a day and night. Holding on to a plank in the cold sea. And he couldn't die. Because no man could take away his life. They whipped Paul more than they whipped Jesus. Opened up the back of Jesus. To take the sickness of this earth. And of this world. They did to Paul much more than that. But he didn't die. Because no man could take away his life. He came to a place where he said, 
Sometimes I desire to break camp and be with the Lord. It is better. But I am confident that I cannot die because I am needed. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain. One time he was in an accident for a whole month in the sea. And then he stood up and he told those guys, guys be confident. The angel of the God, whose I am and whom I serve, stood by me last night and said, no man, Paul is here, no man can die. I pray for you that you be a man of God, that gunmen can invade the service and you tell them, shh, drop down your guns while members are watching. But if you're the first one to go under the seat and tell members, surrender, surrender, wisdom is profitable. What will you preach to them tomorrow? Pray till death looks like a joke. Pray till God invades your soul. Pray till you hear the anthems of Zion. Pray till you hear the backup choir of heaven in your soul and in your spirit. Pray until you lose the fear of death and begin to walk in the confidence of eternity. Pray till a cripple on a wheelchair looks like he's acting out to you. Pray until cancer looks like a dot. Pray. You are too alive in the flesh. That's we are taking five hours counseling someone that needs to be delivered and giving him another appointment. The appointment cards. Come back again, I will review it. Because it has become a business for you where you get bread for your family. Pray till bread is not in your mind. Pray till you forget there is a reward. And God will reward you in a way that the world sees it. But you see more of God. The more they see your cars, the more you see God. The more they see your houses, the more you see God. The more they see the money you have, the more you see your prayer place. Because you pray to a certain dimension. Tell your neighbor a dimension. Tell him you are too alive. That's why you fear death. When you die, you don't fear death. You know when you die, it is people that feel the pain. You don't feel it. You know why you fear death is because you are alive. But if you become cognizant of the fact that you are buried with, you are not a living man, you are a dead man. Then, you, then dead men don't die. Nobody shoots a dead man. Tell your neighbor, catch God. Hmm. Catch God. So now look at this. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for the progress and the joy of your faith. The reason I can't die is because your faith needs me to be alive. So I can't die. So there's a reason for his life. Message translation. From verse number 23. Somebody say the hand of God. I didn't hear you say again the hand of God. Father, give me grace this year. I need your hand upon my life. Lord, give me grace to stay with you long enough that when I open my mouth to lead worship. Sometimes people blame me, Pastor, when I talk so much about Nathaniel Bassi. I can't help it. But God is raising more Nathaniel Bassis in this congregation. God will raise more than signatures in this congregation. Listen, the man went to five nights of glory and he sang an ordinary song, I know you are here. And blew the trumpet and you couldn't take back the meeting because he didn't come alone. Even God said, I'll go before you. There are things coming against you that need to meet God. So God said, allow me to go before you. Don't bump into trouble, then you start looking for me. It is an abomination that you are fasting and praying because there's trouble. You didn't see it coming. You are too blind until you swallowed poison. You can't rise up as a pastor. So you are calling for prayer. We don't pray because there's trouble. We pray long enough that we can smell trouble. Our agenda when we go to the place of prayer is not God lift me. It's not God deliver me from trouble. It's not God show me what is coming. Our agenda is God. And the God who goes before you. If you pray long enough. They were planning to shoot you in the night. And that's the time God told you, don't go this way. Go down and pray. And they waited until they got tired. They left. You are driving home. Because God went before you. And whoever cannot shoot God cannot shoot you. Turn your neck again. Is this a good teaching? Do you like what I'm teaching? 
hard choice. The desire to break camp here and be with Christ is powerful. Some days I can think of nothing better. But most days, because of what you are going through, I'm sure that it's better for me to stick it out here. Look at verse 26. Okay, verse 25. So I plan to be around a while. He didn't say, if God is willing, I'll be around. <laughs> You think you're spiritual and you're using such words. I plan to be around. Is my plan. Is in my agenda. Long life is in my plan. He didn't say God is planning. He said I plan. I plan to be around a while. Companion to you as your growth and joy in this life of trusting God continues. I want to be there when your daughter is getting married. So I die going where? I want to be there when you are dedicating your mansion. I die going where? I want to be there when you are no longer the Mbeho Mbeho I see today. When you are carrying a hundred million in the boot of a Range Rover. I want to be there to see. So I plan to be around. Raise your hands and say, Lord, <laughs> get me to a dimension and a place where it is my choice to be around. So I plan. You sit down with your wife. You say, okay, in the next 40 years, we are going to be saying, my husband, don't talk like that. You are not. So no, I'm planning to be around in the next 40 years. Because the prayer I prayed yesterday, or the prayer I've been waiting on God, I am confident. I plan to be around. In case you are afraid to plan, I plan on your behalf. You will be around. Can I hear somebody say amen? Raise your hands and say the hand of God is the greatest resource in the entirety of this life. Lord, let men take away anything else, but let your hand remain upon my life. Let men fight over titles and argue over social media, but let your hand remain upon my life. The hand of God is the greatest resource in a man's life. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 26, is it? If I'm not wrong, I want you to get this. Paul telling them, brethren, do not worry. The angel of the God, whose I am and whom I serve. We have been in this for a long time. Trouble has been around us for a long time. Death has been looking for us in the sea. But the angel of the God, whom I serve, stood by me last night. And gave me this assurance that we may lose the boat, but we are not losing anyone. Because Paul, I'm here serving God. There are things you may lose, but I will not lose you. I will bury none of you. I'm planning to bury nobody's baby this year. I'm not burying any member of your family. Plan for them. No God will place where you plan. Look at this. Turn your neck again. Now by tomorrow I know you'll come. No, uh, tomorrow. Next week you'll carry your Bible. By the time I take you through this, for three days you'll now carry your Bible. So when I say you, you check. Get your iPad, get your tabs, get your Bible in every gadget you have. That's why I put you in front of the screen so that you can have your Bible. Look at this. And now I urge you to take heart. I urge you to take heart. For there will be no loss of life among you. But only of the things that are dead. The sheep we will lose because we can get another one. But because we can't replace your life, we will not lose you. I speak over you, losses have come to an end. Can I hear an amen in the house? Losses have come to an end. The hand of God over your life has stopped the losses of your life. So he said, for there are... There stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and who I there stood by me and I knew this is not a demon I knew this is the angel of the Lord to whom I belong and whom I serve Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said the God that we serve it's not just a God, it's a God we are serving. Serve God with your life. 
wacha hizi kalongolongo wacha hizi ukora wacha hizi kuingia kanisa ndaka mbili umeshatoroka serve god with your life give god your life if you want god to ensure it give god your life if you don't want to die like a dog give god your life if you don't want to die like someone that never served god look at this paul says saying do not be afraid paul do not be afraid for you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. God didn't see those that are sailing with you. God has given them to you as a gift. I didn't see them, I saw you. And I've bundled these men and I've given them to you. Listen. When people don't know God and they're walking in the spirit of rebellion, they make statements like his pastor God. They were saved because Pastor Paul was in that boat. And the angel that appeared is not an angel that they were serving. It's an angel of the God whom Paul served and the God that Paul belonged to. Serve God to a place that a whole bus will be preserved because of you. Serve God to a place that your family members who are not born again will be preserved because of you. Serve God to a place where your entire company will be preserved because of you. The company had a terrible bomb blast and people died. And later on, the widows of the people who died there were being paid. And God saved the brother. He was a poor brother, but God saved him. He had gone for a short call in another building. There was no water in the building where he was working. So he left that building to go for a long call. Not a short one, a long call in another building. Then the bomb killed people as he had gone for a long call. Then by the time he came back, people had died. It was bad, but he was safe. So when the families of those who died in the blast were being paid, I don't know, five, five million. The wife heard about it. And the wife said, my husband, you have let us down. He said, how? He said, look at opportunity to enjoy five million. When the opportunity knocked, that's the time the demons of your village wali kupeleka kukunia. Akalia nafasi. Enye tumekosa, ungekufa kwa hii blast. We could have gotten five million. Poverty is bad. Let the hand of God be upon you that he doesn't just preserve you but he makes you an asset. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I plan to be around because I serve God. I plan to be around. Listen, the hand of God. God told Paul, I've given you those that are sailing with you. You walk into a company when God gives you the company plus the boss. Will you beg for promotion? The hand of God is the ingredient that gives you anywhere you find yourself. But the time you travel to go and preach in a ministry as a visiting preacher and God has already given you from the pastor to the members, what else are you looking for? There are men who stand to preach and you can tell this man has been given the meeting. That's the dimension you need to come to. I was preaching somewhere. The last three minutes of my preaching, before I dropped the mic, I said... I need 18 people to give 1 million by tomorrow morning. And you have 5 minutes before I get to the third floor of your pastor's office. If you're not there, don't come. They had to turn away many people because God gave me the meeting. When I will listen to 10,000? They'll not run to you. They'll run to the parking to go. You need God to give you meetings. You need God to give you companies. As a lady, you need God to give you a man. Don't just seek a marriage partner. Papa, ni olewe, na oreka, kwa imani, na igia sasa, di ring, di oyo by faith, na oreka. Don't seek such cheap stuff. May God give you a man. God gave the king to Esther. Esther prepared the dinner two nights. The first night she said nothing. They ate and left. The king could not sleep. For Esther to call us for a dinner. What is happening? Because God gave the man to him. Other women came and walked and did their stuff and became concubines. But when Esther came, God gave her the kingdom and the king. Because of the hand of God over Esther's life. Shout, Lord, let your hand be upon my life. Before you sit for any television interview, may God give you the television interview. dangerous to buy land God has not given you. Then land begins to slap you. Because you bought land you are not given. You 
married a woman but you are not given the woman by God. You are struggling to preach in a city God has not given you. God told Paul, I've given you the men that are sailing with you. God will give you companies. God will give you men ordained to help you. God will give you defenders. God will give you protectors. God will give you men that will argue your case like you paid them, but you didn't pay them. God will give you the treasures of this earth. God will give you the heavens and the earth. Genesis 27 verse 27. Somebody shout the hand of God. Lay your right hand on your head and say the hand of God. Come upon my life. Lord, if there's anything I need, is your hand upon my life. When God rests his hand on a man, and I'm about to close now. Now look at this. Can we read it? Now, to, uh, next week, because I'll pity them, and I'll still want them to sit where they're seated, you'll give them a screen here. Are we together? And then we'll be kind enough, we'll put one here. But for the last time. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his clothing. And he blessed him and said to him, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Look at verse 28. Therefore may God give you. God gives men. May God give you of the dew of heaven. And of the fatness of the earth. Kuna watu wa hawakupewa pesa, walipewa manono ya inchi. Yani akiingia kwa inchi nono alishapewa. He was not given kwa shako infested up. He has been given the fatness of the earth. Anything fat looks for them. A fat check, a fat car, a fat air ticket. They can't travel with the kwa shako infested air ticket. They travel with a fat ticket, a fat air ticket, a fat check a fat salary because they have been given the fatness of the earth on this earth anything they want must be fat even if they ordered for a thin one a fat one will come sometimes you know this by looking at a man's first car one day i prayed for a brother here he was believing god for his first car he left the service i think it was ibada taremoja when he left, he got a Mercedes-Benz car. And that was going to be his first car. It is called the fatness of the earth. I called one of us here. Pastor is here. And many of you are there when I threw a, a face towel at him. How many of you remember? And I told him, have it. And he went and he bought a car. I was looking at his, I don't know if it is his first car, but I was looking at the car. I said, where did you steal? How can you drive something like this and you call your first car? It's called the fatness of the earth. I speak over you and those that are watching me that God is changing your atmosphere from being an atmosphere that is infected by thin things to an atmosphere that is infected by fat things. Raise your hands and say, Lord, give me the fatness of the earth. You didn't say it very well. Say, Lord, give me the fatness of the earth. And the fatness, which means anything that anything thin does not hear you. Because you carry an atmosphere for fat. Some of us, your salary has kwashako. You're earning salary that has marasmus. Unaishikanga if you kishai pata kwanza. We mwenye unaishiko na yonea uruma. and it is your salary you look at your pay slip and you feel like slapping it I pray for you the God whose I am and the God whom I serve I pray for you that as you seek the hand of God to be upon you you will see the fatness of the earth I pray for you if God called me and anointed me as you listen to me and make God the priority in your life something that is fat will begin to land over your life there's a fat house. Somebody said, but pastor, all the things of this earth are passing by. Wonderful statement. Let them pass through my house. 
may God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain. There are people that were not just given money, they were given plenty in the realm of the spirit. Even a place where there is lack, they can't carry lack, they carry plenty. Get back to Paul and give it to me in the good news translation. The angel of the God whom I serve and whose I am stood by me last night and told me I have given you those you are traveling with. When a man has God, God gives him people. If God has given you people, there are people that no matter what they hear, no matter the evidences they have against you, they will say, well, we have seen it. We have confirmed it, but I brought you one million. Are you willing to receive? And what hurts people is that after they talk rubbish with other people against you, when they see the same people still blessing you, man, it kills them. Because they don't understand God gave you those people. Don't just fight. May God give you people. May God give somebody their boss here tonight. Whereby everyone can speak, even where you are not supposed to speak. Philip, what do you think? And then what Philip says carries the day. Then everybody gets angry. Najua, ni kama alipeana kitu. Najua, hitu taona. Bossi mingina takuja. Then paradventure, they change the boss. And the one that comes, listens to everyone and still goes the same. And this guy has not spoken speak. He said, can you see me after this? They say, ah, ni kama ule mwingine. Haliambia uyu pia. They never understand that God gives men. When God gives you a man to love you, it doesn't matter what people say. People can tell him everything when they are done is buying you a new car. Say, baby, for the way they have spoiled your name, you need a range. He buys you a new car. God will give you people. I said, God will give you people. Therefore, let God be your business. Let God be your agenda. Let going after God be your passion. Let going after God be your everything. Because if God does that, then don't go for that. Go for God. Look at this. Therefore, no need to do what? To dwell on that now. I can't even see what is there. <laughs> they are too small. I'm used to fat things because I have the fatness of the earth. So if I don't deal with small things. <laughs> so I'll pass over that. The angel of the God whom I serve stood by me and told me, I've given you everyone that is sailing with you. Ladies and gentlemen, and that's why they came to Elisha, the prophet. I close with that tonight. And when they came to Elisha, after roundabouts, after trouble, after they are stuck, they are trying to pursue what they lost. Elijah said, give me a musician. And as the musician played the hand of God, 2 Kings 3.15, the hand of God came upon Elisha. It happened because things happen when the hand of God is in a place. Then the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, if you are writing, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse number 24. What does the message translation say? The book of the preacher, chapter 2, and verse number 24. What does the message translation say? Put it there. The best you can do with your life is to have a good time and get by the best you can. The way I see it, that's it. Divine, divine faith. But now give us the good news translation. Somebody said the best time. You know one thing is this, whether you live your life angry all through your life, someone will smile in your funeral. Kuna mutu atasema ongezi wa mandazi. Hata jali umekufa. Hata ongezi wa mandazi kwa funeral yako. Wendi umesanya watu kwa jeneza, lakini mandazi itaongezi wa na watakula. So there's no need to live your life angry. People will celebrate in your funeral. Look at this. The best thing we can do is eat and drink and enjoy what we have earned. And yet I realize that even this comes from God. The ability to eat what you have earned and enjoy it and have a good time is not from the devil. It's from God. Buy yourself a nice bed so that when you have really prayed, as you sleep, you feel the sleep. Because one day you'll sleep and not wake up. So if you can still sleep and wake up, enjoy it. Did you get that? 
Now, give it to us in the good news, the new King James Version. I want to show you something. Now, the new King James does not just say, it comes from God, says this is the hand of God. Look at this. Nothing is better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should, and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. When the hand of God comes on you, someone needs to key into this prayer. Cut off the life of frustration and, 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 and lack and poverty and want and tears all the time. Food brings and pleasure is assured. The hand of God does not guarantee poverty. It guarantees a life that you can testify about. Receive that in the name of Jesus. So when the hand of God comes on a man, God will not leave you hungry. So don't go for the food that much. Go for the hand of God. Stay with God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David said one time, I was old, now I, I was young, now I am old. I've never seen the righteous men forsaken and I've never seen their children begging for bread. I speak over your life, you will not beg for bread even as you serve God. Your generation will be a testimony that you serve God. The scripture says the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be found in their houses. When a man walks right with God, the generation that comes from him cannot beg for bread. Stop victimizing us with poverty as if it's a gift of the Spirit. When will the church preach poverty? Even Jesus said, the anointing is upon me to preach good news to the poor. Good news to a man who cannot pay school fees is that the Lord has provided. Jesus met hungry people and he didn't tell them they are spiritual. He gave them food. Telling them, I hate the way you are. This is not my will for you. They ate and there were 12 baskets left. Abundance is the will of God for your life. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Raise your hands and say as the hand of God comes upon my life, the life of lack is terminated in the name of Jesus. When the hand of God rests upon you, you will enjoy things you didn't work for. You will enjoy promotions you didn't work for. You will enjoy favors you didn't work for. You will enjoy men giving you stuff that you didn't even work for. Raise your hands and say the hand of God rest upon my life. Quickly, Psalm 118 verse 16. Give me good news translation. Psalm 118 and verse number 16. Good news. Psalm 118 and verse number 16. Look at this. His power has brought us victory. His mighty power in battle. Give us the message translation. Mahalaga Braza. Psalm 18, 16. Look at this. The hand of God is raised in victory. The hand of God has turned the tide. Somebody say again, the hand of God. Say it again, the hand of God. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. Can you give us the NIV? As much as you've got to be very careful when you're dealing with NIV. But look at NIV. The Lord's right hand is lifted, is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. When the hand of God is on you, what you are about to see in this, in this encounter, when the hand of God comes on Elisha, you are about to see mighty things. That's why stay with God till the hand of God rests on you. You will do great and mighty things. You will take territories. You will do things that the hand of a man cannot do because the hand of God is upon your life. Mighty things. A mighty house. You know how a mighty house looks like? When people say this man owns this house, people say you are lying. Because God does things that are bigger than you. Who is it? Fanana ngombe yako na ni mungu. Wewe na mbuzi yako mnatoshana. Na unasema ni mungu. If it is God, when we look at the flock, we say, who owns this? They say, that small man. Because God does things that are bigger than you. Mighty things. Great and mighty things. Somebody shout, I hear, Pastor. And I take that in the name of Jesus. First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you. The hand of God is the key behind exaltation that happens in due time. Dear man of God, sometimes you can do everything you know how to do. And the ministry is not growing. Submit to the hand of God. 
He has a way. The hand of God raises men. God will never bring his hand on you to keep you under. He brings his hand on you to raise you up. The hand of God raises men. Humble yourselves. And how does it come? When you lower yourself, God raises you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under, the mighty, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. You may humble for some time and not see it, but there's a time called due time. When God has set up everything, when all your brothers are standing still, the prophet is there, the oil is ready, and then you are told, come from the wilderness. Everything is set to receive you. And the oil comes on your head, and you become the man the family looks up to. God has due time. When a father-in-law that you want to marry his daughter insults you, don't get angry. Take the insult as a blessing. Mtu akikuangalia sema umejiangalia ukaona ni binti yangu naweza wa. Wewe usikasirike. Mungu ataandaa meza. Ulisikia kwamba nitaandaa meza mbele ya maadui wako. Whenever God prepares a table, the table is meant to preach to someone that never liked you. There's no car God gives you for your friends. That's why I don't defend people and they criticize your blessing. It is meant for them. At least they have seen. There are people God intentionally hurts by raising you. Because God wants them to swallow what they said. A brother was so humiliated by a particular family. Embarrassed. Stopped from marrying the girl. Then God gave him money. Then he went back there now with money in the convoy. And everybody loved him and he said, I want to teach these guys a lesson. Said, Papa, by tomorrow, get someone to unroof the whole of this place. He already had someone he wanted to marry. But the girl now came because he has money. And he said, perfect opportunity to teach them a lesson. I'm not saying you should do these things. So he went there and a convoy. Then he said, unroof every house. I'm getting back to the city tomorrow. Contractors are coming on ground. Then he disappeared and went abroad. He told them, Tafuteni fundi, arufi yo nyumba, mjue vile nilisikia, mulipo nituka na mara ya kwanza. Now that is wickedness. Don't do that. Mtu wakija kutafuta binti ya kwa nita kumuoha, na anapenda mungu, anaishimu mungu. Lakini ukimuangalia viatu zimeisha. Ukimuangalia mshipi haiko. Ukimuangalia kile unaona ni hui mtu ni mtu wa maombi. If you are smart. If you are smart. Never insult somebody who has come to propose to your daughter. Never do that. Even if you don't like him marrying your daughter, there's a better way to put it. Dunia he no man is stood down that he can't rise. That's why God ensures when he prepares a table, there are enemies. You can't finish enemies. Even if you do die by fire, there are those that don't die by fire. They die by seeing the table. There are people God will not kill using corona. God will kill them by your wedding. They blocked you on Facebook, but you'll have enough money to sponsor your page. When a page is sponsored, it pops up everywhere. And then he was just having a nice time at midnight. It is terrible to see the picture of your enemy doing well at midnight. You are night spoiled. <laughs> God will spoil people's nights if you stay with God long enough. Don't defend yourself when men say you have gone down. Don't defend yourself when men say all kinds of things about you. Don't even try to prove you're doing well. When God prepares a table, he ensures there is someone that will see it. When God prepares your lifting, he wants to get back at a man. There are men God will not answer now. Give them 10 years. God knows how to plan an embarrassing meeting. Let the hand of God be on you. Amen. God knows where you meet people that never thought anything good can come. Exaltation in due time is a product of the hand of God. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Number four, ladies and gentlemen, not only exaltation, Isaiah 48, verse number 13, if you can give me the same NIV, 
There are amazing things that God creates in your life when his hand comes upon you. The hand of God cannot be on you and you fail to experience the creative aspect of God. Now those are the things you see here when we pray. People getting money in the bank. Debts being erased in the system. A lady had a school fee balance of about 33,000. She went there and they are telling her it is 6,000. He said, no, but it is 33. You people are not. Then she remembered. I said, God will pay debts. You are dealing with God. Stop looking at God as a God who does calculations the same way you do. A thousand years to the Lord is like a day. So stop calculating God based on the arithmetic you are taught in school. When you are dealing with God, the yesterday of God settled your entire future. Leave alone the today. God's yesterday. He tells Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. I paid your bills before they came. The house you are building is not an accident to God. He provided for it before you knew how to speak. He settled your dowry before your mother met your father. Stop praying like your need is an emergency to God. It's not. It doesn't surprise him. I want you to see God that way. Look at this. My own hand. Oh boy. Somebody shot my own hand. My own hand laid the foundations of the earth. And my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. When the hand of God is involved, the heaven can be summoned. The same way witches and wizards summon stuff. A man can fly right into your house in the middle of the night. And a very big rat falls down. Boom. A man through astral projection has landed in your house. But God says, when my hand is upon you, the earth can be summoned. The heaven can be summoned. Which means amazing things will happen in your life because my hand is upon you. The hand of God is the reason you'll go in between dangerous men. They are looking for you and asking you, have you seen so and so? And the you they are asking is the you they are looking for. The hand of God. The hand of God will confuse the witch of your village. You will bewitch his son. Thinking he's bewitching you. The hand of God will turn wizards in your village into drama queens. They'll bewitch themselves. I read the story of a guy called Utena Church. Utena Church, there was a feared witch doctor. Everybody feared the witch doctor. Utena Church looked at the witch doctor. He was a young man. And a church means someone you cannot control. So he looked at the witch doctor. He said, I'm the one who will kill this man. And this witch doctor was very smart. He never used to go for a call in the pit latrine. Because he knew someone can use his call against him. So Tiana Church studied him. And realized he goes on a call in the river in the morning. Then the river goes with it so nobody can find it. So a church watched him. Then a church went down the river. And the river brought the witch doctor's shit. And the church collected it. And took it to his own door. And left it there. And the witch doctor woke up and said, Ah! Me that people fear. Mtu wa mekunia kwa mlango yangu. Watajua mini nani? Na akajiroga na akajiondoa. May the anointing of a church rest upon your life. Somebody, somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> when the hand of God is upon you, unazafanya mganga jiroge. Wizi watajibia wenyewe. Wataita kongamano kazini against you and they end up fighting then they come to report to you we ukiona hebu tukuulize and the, the fight was about you tukikuuliza wewe unaonaje you tell them come down the hand of god is upon this man you cannot pull him down raise your hand and say lord let your hand be upon my life so the hand of god came upon elisha now allow me to read only this we go home because of time and this is what Elisha said. Kabra Zagada. Man, I've left out so many things. This is what Elisha said. 
in verse number 17. Thus says the Lord. Because the hand of God is on him. You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water. So that you, your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hands. When the hand of God comes on a man, the supernatural becomes natural. There shall be no rain. There shall be no water. There shall be no rain. There shall be no wind. Yet there shall be the water you've been looking for. And when this thing happens, it will amaze men. But it is a small thing before God. I will give you 100 million in a way you will not understand. And it will still be a small thing before God. Somebody say the hand of God. You will do a wedding that men will wonder, where did you get the money from? Yet it will be a small thing before God. Somebody say the hand of God. Your children will go to some of the best schools. You'll not understand how. And they'll never be arrears. They'll never be balanced. They'll do their best to the glory of God. And at the end of the day, it will be a small thing to God. Somebody say the hand of God. There shall be no rain. There shall be no wind. Tumezoya ili mvua inyeshe. Lazima kuwe na wind. Lazima kuwe na ili tupate maji lazima kuwa ni mvua lazima kuwa na upepo lakini Mungu akasema because my hand is on a man the protocol has been changed there shall be no rain there shall be no wind yet there shall be water because the hand of God changes the protocols of men when God wants to give you anything a number of times if the thing demands a campaign, sometimes it can ensure people campaign for you. How many of you remember the young MP somewhere from Mount Kenya that campaigned while trekking? Had nothing. And was telling people his vision. The guy had nothing. The guy campaigned trekking. The guy was a nobody and won a parliamentary seat. Those are the kind of things you can compare with the hand of God. The hand of God looks something like that. That's what you call the hand of God. Raise your hand and say, let the hand of God come upon my life in the name of Jesus. I pray for you tonight. May the hand of God may something in your life that looks impossible. Is there anyone here that you have something that is looking impossible? What wa kawaida wame kuangalia? You look at the project. The project looks impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, you need the hand of God on your life. The hand of God changes protocol. There shall be no rain. There shall be be no wind yet there shall be water because the hand of God has come upon Elisha I pray for you as you go home let God be priority in your life let God be what you pursue let God be the, take the center stage of your life, both online and within the house. I came to make an appeal to you that it is impossible without God. Let no other formula take the center stage. Let God take the center stage in your life. Trust God with your life. Trust God with everything about you. Trust God with your vision. Trust God with your project. That house that is giving you sleepless nights, God can build it. God can build it without a man. God can provide in your life. Be bold about God. The hand of God changes the protocol. The hand of God changes the way things are used to, people are used to things. That's why the greatest asset you can ever have on your life is the hand of God. Then the hand of God came upon Ezekiel and the hand of God took him to a valley that is full of dry bones because the hand of God is not meant for possibilities. When the hand of God comes on you, impossibility remains a word in the dictionary. It doesn't remain a word in real life.
because the hand of God has come upon you. Bow down your head and speak to God for one minute tonight. Shaka Badadiba, speak in other tongues. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, open your mouth and begin to speak in other tongues. And pray one prayer. Lord, let your hand be upon my life. Let your hand come upon this thing that is looking impossible. Let your hand come upon this thing that is looking like I will beg and beg and beg. Let your hand rest on me even as I embark on this thing that looks like it is impossible. Let your hand create a wall around my life. Let your hand create a wall on my destiny. Let your hand create a wall on this thing. Let your hand be experienced on this thing in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen. Lay your hands on your head and say, let the hand of God be the trademark of my life. Let the hand of God be the trademark of my destiny. Let the hand of God be the trademark of my next week. Let the hand of God be the trademark of my weekend. Over this weekend, I shall see the hand of God over my life. Put your hands together and let's appreciate the Lord tonight. Put your hands together let's appreciate him. The hand of God. There's something about the hand of a man. And there's something about the hand of God. There is dano, and there is the hand of God. Let the hand of God prevail over you. When evil men look for you, let the hand of God blanket you. Let the hand of God blanket your family. Let the hand of God blanket all that belong to you. Let the hand of God blanket everything about you. Wicked men will look for you, they'll not see you. The hand of God is upon you. You are a child of God. Be confident in it as you walk. Knowing one thing, that the hand of God is upon my life. As you walk into a board meeting, be cognizant of the fact that the hand of God is upon your life. And Elisha began to speak, I don't have the time. And one of the things Elisha told them is that what was taken from you, you're going to get it back. You will humiliate the enemy dangerously because when the hand of God is on you, anything you ever lost comes back to you. Amen. Have you ever lost anything? Except the wrong woman you lost. It's coming back to you. <laughs> if you lose a wrong woman, let it not be part of your recovery prayers. As you pray, specify to God, except that woman. <laughs> and if you ever lost a wicked man, in the journey of relationship, as you pray, specify to God, accept that man. But everything else, because you know we can pray these recovery prayers. And then someone that God already got out of your life that was wicked. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise in Jesus' holy name. And everyone say amen. amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Uh, the guy with the offering basket should be here to pick my offering in the name of the Lord.